we're going to do exercise 7.5, which is compute activity rates and assign to a cost object. So let's read our question. Brookside Property Management is a property management service company for small shopping malls that uses ABC to estimate costs for pricing and other purposes. The owner of the company believes that costs are driven primarily by the area of outdoor maintenance, parking lots, sidewalks, gardens, etc., the area of indoor tenant space in the shopping mall, the distance to travel to the shopping mall, and the number of shopping malls managed. In addition, the cost of managing the indoor tenant space depend on whether the tenants are located on the main level or on other levels of the mall. Accordingly, the company uses the five activity cost pools listed below. So here's the management of outdoor areas. Then we have our indoor mall space main level, indoor mall space other levels, the travel time, and customer billing and service. This is given to us in the question, so all we've done is replicate it. The company has already carried out its first stage allocation of costs. The company's annual costs and activities are summarized as follows. So here's our estimated costs for each of these particular uh, general ledger accounts, or, or for, sorry, for each of these activity cost pools. Here's the expected activity that, uh, that's expected for each of these cost pools, and here's the measure. So in other words, we're going to incur $69,850 of overhead costs associated with the outdoor areas, and the outdoor areas represent 127,000 square meters. Parker Hills, I'm going to continue reading the question now, Parker Hills Shopping Mall is one of Brookside's oldest clients. Details concerning the mall's layout, outdoor space, and distance from Brookside's head office are as follows. And here is Brookside, and here are the five activity cost pools that we have up here. And here's the actual activity. So management of outdoor areas, there's 16,000 square meters. Indoor space, 25,000 square meters, but nothing else. So we know that it's a one level mall. Travel to jobs, 2,500 kilometers, and it's one represents one shopping mall. So what do we have to do here? Number one, compute the activity rate for each of the activity cost pools. So what we need to do is figure out, well, if this cost is driven by square meters, how much per square meter? Same with here and here, how much per kilometer here and how much per shopping mall here. So it's not very difficult to see that all we're doing is just a, a division. So it's equals our cost divided by our activity driver. And that's it. Once we have that measure, all we have to do is just drag down and there we go. That was nice and simple, wasn't it? And that's the nice thing about Excel. Listen, uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Dividing 69,000 by 127,000 uh, uh, is, is what you do in grade two and grade three. You no longer need to do that. So doing this on paper and doing all of these, all of these slow calculations by hand will make you very good at doing simple math, but that's not the point. So we've done it very, very quickly, and it's done. So let's go on to part two of this question now. Part two says, determine the total overhead costs that would be assigned to the Parker Hill shopping mall using the ABC system. Now look what I've done here. I put the activity levels down here and notice that I have them in the same order as I have them up here. So here's the expected activity and here's the activity level and the costs run down this column here. So this makes it easy in Excel. If you lay your work out in Excel nicely, it becomes easy to work with. So we'll just click in here, equals, we have 16,000, and we're going to multiply it by the activity rate, which is up here, and enter. Well, the next cell is going to be the, next, the same thing. It's going to be this one, one down, multiplied by one down, and so on and so on. So all we have to do is take the original calculation and just drag down. There we go. We've done number one and number two. That's how quickly we can do things with Excel. That's called working smart not working hard. You really should start to lay, uh, uh, as you work with Excel more, you'll learn how to lay it out in such a way that your columns and your rows uh, help you in doing these quick calculations. That is exercise 7.5. We're going to go on to 7.6, second stage allocation. Larner Corporation is a diversified manufacturer of industrial goods. The company's ABC system contains the following six activity cost pools and activity rates. And here's our activity cost pools. Here's our activity rates. And here's our activity cost driver. So supporting direct labor is $7 per direct labor hour. Machine processing is $3 per machine hour, etc., etc. <clears throat> 
Continuing on, activity data have been supplied for the following products. So we have product J78 and product W52. And we have our six activity cost pools and the activity that we expect to find in each of the two products. Required, determine the total overhead cost that would be assigned to each of the products listed above in the ABC system. So here I've replicated the six activity cost pools and here's our two products and we just need to figure out what dollar amounts go into each of these, uh, into each of these columns. Well, supporting direct labor, we know is $7 per direct labor hour and job J78 will experience 1,000 of those. So equals 1,000 multiplied by seven and we hit enter. Now since I've laid out the spreadsheet in a very systematic way, each of these cost pools is identical to each of these cost pools in order, which is identical to each of these in order, and all of the costs and all of the activities are in order, so all I need to do is just drag down the column for my total. Uh, whoops, I didn't go far enough. There we go. Now for the next one, it's pretty much the same thing. It will be the activity multiplied by the activity rate and we hit enter and we just drag down the full column and there we go that's how simple these things can be um, what we've done here is we've taken a uh, um, just so to, to sort of debrief here we have these two jobs and we have a measure of activity that occurred within these two jobs so based on our results from our first stage allocation which is taking our general ledger accounts and assigning them to activity cost pools once we have our activity rate, we can then do second stage allocation, which is assign them to cost objects. And a cost object here is this product. J78 is referred to as a cost object. It's the object of our costing. Now you can think about it that way. Cost object just sounds so abstract. For anyone who's got any uh, uh, computer science uh, background, if you've thought about uh, object-oriented programming and you understand that, that, uh, that we create objects, well, it's the same thing here. These are all objects with different characteristics. And these characteristics are, are the activity levels of each of the activity cost pools. And then we just assign them to the actual cost object. First stage allocation, second stage allocation. That's it.